Dante Lavrock, uh, first of all, thank you for joining. A year ago today, uh, Bermuda took center stage in Costa Rica, um, taking on Costa Rica in their first ever Girl Cup uh, mm -hmm. appearance. Um, take us through going to the stadium for the Bermuda team, because obviously excitement, mm -hmm. you guys have trained hard, um, had, had time on the ground in Costa Rica, but now it's mm -hmm. game time. Take us through from the hotel to the changing room, what that mood was like, and, and just what the talk was amongst your players. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing on social media now, um, you know, the, the flashbacks and all that, so it brings back the memories. But, you know, I, I feel in our first game in Costa Rica, like you said, we had been to the um, stadium day before, and, you know, you felt that buzz, everyone taking pictures together and checking out the field and the surface and stuff. Um, so, you know, we had a good team talk at the hotel. I remember that it was, you know, we all were focused and, and, and ready to go. Like you said, it was, a, it was a long process of, you know, um, training, working hard that whole summer. Everyone traveling in from, you know, the various parts of the world. So, uh, you know, we got to the, to the stadium, you know, good locker rooms. And I think we just felt at ease. We, we felt ready. Um, and, you know, it, it, unfortunately, the result was what it was, but for that to be the experience was, it was just an amazing feeling. As the game wore on, especially the first half and, uh, you know, Bermuda were holding their own and, and creating chances as well, um, kind of surprising um, mm. Haiti at times because we didn't fool, we didn't just throw in the towel. And then in, in stoppage time, you scored. Um, mm. given, I guess, given a sense of we belong, is that how that feeling went going into halftime? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, we, we have this confidence in this team that we can, we can be anyone. And over the last, you know, year or two years, I think we've proven that we can compete. Um, like you said, um, we started the game. We knew that they were underestimate us. You know, they see us on paper. And, you know, you see this little small lot and, and I think they thought that they were run all over us. But, you know, we should in that first half that we can we can compete, we can play football. And again, we could create chances. Um, we had some very, very good chances. Um, you know, we again in the right positions, but we just couldn't finish it. Um, and as for me, you know, I always feel in a, in a set piece like in school. Um, I'm always confident of that. We were doing set pieces the day before at the training ground. And, you know, I told... I can't remember who it was. I think I told Jay Long. I was like, yeah, I'm scoring tomorrow. Like, you know, you have that feeling. So it was a great feeling. But um, again, the result, it, it still haunts me to this day, to be honest. They managed to, they managed to equalize early and then get that, that what proved to be the winner uh, midway through that first half. I mean, through the second half. Um, but we still created chances. We didn't, we didn't. Uh, fall down. And I think I remember in the press conference after um, talking to you, you still had some hope that that match could springbox you to the next match against Costa Rica in Dallas in a matter of only mm -hmm. four days that, that you had to yeah. get, you know, get there, get settled and, and get ready to for another tough battle. Was that was that the, 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 the feeling, the mindset? Yeah, and again, you know, we've faced adversity as a team and as a country. Um, we didn't let us let that, um, you know, hinder our preparation. You know, a lot of us have played at a high level now. Even the local players have played at a high level internationally. And, you, you know, when you're at this level, you realize that things happen. You know, you, you don't win every game. And once that whistle blows and you do have a next match in the coming years, you instantly have to prepare. So, you, you know, you're getting a recovery in it. You're getting your um, your protein shakes. If you need an ice bath, you're getting talking to the physio. I need this done, that done. So, you know, you can't really, uh, you know, sit on those things and and, and think about those uh, those situations too much. Only when it comes to time to to analyze the game and see, okay, we did this right, we did that wrong. 
how can we improve on that? There's any things that you really worry about as a player. But um, again, you know, we did feel let down. Um, looking back at the game, we, we rewatched the game and it was some things in the first goal and even um, how the tide sort of changed in the second half, it could have been avoided. Um, and I definitely learned from that as a defender. Um, so, you know, it was all a learning experience, but, you know, we also talked about, you know, we're not just here for the experience anymore. You know, we want to compete and we want to win. So. We get into Dallas and um, shake off that, that, that disappointment of Costa Rica, but we're going to face Costa Rica in Dallas. And we saw that they had um, had, a, had a, a, a big win, a 4-0 win over Nicaragua in their opening match. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess the, with, with the coaching staff of, of Bermuda, uh, just reminding you guys to keep it as simple as possible, stick to your strategy, stick to what you know best. Um, but we find ourselves down 1-0 at halftime of that match. Um, we go into the half still thinking, hey, we're, we're, we're in with a shot of it. But unfortunately, we can see the second goal nine minutes into the second half. But then we score, and, and all of a mm -hmm. sudden, it, it's a different type of game. Uh, it, it looked as if that 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 penalty scored by Nikki was a shot in the arm, a boost. Um, mm -hmm. How did you manage to stay in control of the team? Because once you get like that, things people start to outthink themselves and, and want to try mm -hmm. and do, do things differently. But you have yeah. to stay in control of that and make sure that, that things stay you know, how the how the game plan was supposed to be on the field. How did you manage just that? Yeah, I mean, again, it comes through experience. And like you said, um, even in the Costa Rica game, we had chances as well. Um, and I think, you know, even though they did score, um, I remember, if I can remember correctly, it was on a set piece again, which should have been avoided. But um, the fact that we were creating chances and competing, it gives us that confidence as players. But like you say, yeah, we're two 0 down. And with this team, you know, I've been on other Bermuda team Bermuda teams and, you know, this team's just different and I, I, it's hard to explain, but when our backs are against the wall and, you know, it looks like all is lost, we just like you said, we keep that focus. You know, we have a game plan, we know the way we play. We have a set way of playing. It doesn't matter who we play against. We play the same exact way. And, you know, I think having that structure enables you to, okay, well, we need to stick to the game plan no matter what. And I think that Costa Rica, when they scored the second, they thought there was going to be a whitewash like they did to Nicaragua. But, you know, you know, the key scored the penalty. And, um, you know, it, it, it gave us that fire and that light that said, you know what, we can get another one because we knew – in that game, we have to at least get a draw, even though we, we never play for a draw. But unfortunately, you know, we just fell short. But again, we had chances there as well. But it, again, it just, even though we lost, and it just gave us that confidence, like, you know what? We're really competing against, you know, these nations that have been to the World Cup, have these players playing all over Europe in the top leagues, making millions of dollars. So, you know, even for... The, the the local player that is playing in Bermuda and playing for Robin Hood or Danny Town or Southampton Rangers, you know, so it's it's just it's a major it's a major boost for Bermuda football. But it, again, you know, it, it, it still it, it still hurts to this day for sure. You then head over to Jersey and um, it, it almost feels like home um, with so mm -hmm. many Bermudians so close. Even even the ones that didn't travel made it feel like you guys were at the stadium because, mm -hmm. I mean, the messages that you guys would have been receiving and, and just the volume of support would have made you feel that much more better going into that last game against Nicaragua, who themselves were struggling as well. And a lot of pressure was on them because such a big nation, um, you know, they had prepared well for it. But they're coming up against an inspired team. Um, we go into that match, go into halftime. It's nil-nil. Um, but we're playing rather well. Unfortunately, we didn't get any goals in that first half. And then all of a sudden, we're up 1-0 in the 60th minute. 
and then 11 minutes later, it's 2-0. But then we have to make sure that we stay composed because in, in years going by in our football, we've seen it locally and internationally. We get so excited. We get and, and we lose, we lose shape, we lose focus, we lose all sorts of sense of control. Um, mm -hmm. Talking with Coach Lightborn um, and you guys after the game, it was everybody kept reminding everybody that we still haven't done a job yet. We've still got to get to the finish line. Once that final whistle went, what was your first reaction of emotion for what we, what you had just accomplished as as a team, as a captain, as a as a Bermudian, as a player? Yeah, I mean, my first my first reaction was relief that we won. You know, I felt that we should have won a couple of the other two games, or at least got a point. But again, um, I don't know if it felt like. I was just, you know, you can't really explain that emotion. It just feels unreal, like surreal. That in that moment, I just competed in the Girl Cup with, you know, my friends that I used to play football with when I was younger. You know, majority of us I played through club football, youth national teams, and now we're at the Girl Cup, you know, and, and that journey is over, playing in front of your family. Um, so it's just a surreal feeling. Um but it was more of a relief that we got the result. Um, and it was just, again, a stepping stone to say, you know what? Because historically, Nicaragua is a, is a tough game for Bermuda. You know, you played before um, in, in past national teams, but I feel like, you know, we never felt threatened at all. You know, we had our game plan, we scored our goals. You know, Lili, John had a great game. You know, that pass from Osagi, I still remember to that day, a wonderful pass. Lily scored, then uh, uh, Lily, uh, I remember, did a step over the ball line cross in the key. So in the key, finally scored an open play. So it was more just relief. So, you know what, you know, we, we, we're here, we got the result, and we want to be back. You know, instantly again, after, you know, showering up and, and going to my family, I was like, you know, I, I want to play here again. You know, I want to leave my country here again. So, you know, that's been the main focus now. And unfortunately, with COVID, we haven't been able to play in the uh, the last two legs of the qualifiers, but hopefully next early next year that happens. I'm mean, glad we, we got to that COVID because it has affected football globally as well as um, locally. Um, but you yourself uh, had signed a contract to be playing in, in Poland, um, but but since which you, you've decided to, to come back to Bermuda um, you've played in some places, as we know what's going on in the United States and around the world, where uh, there's a lot of, 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 of marches going on with Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and All Lives Matter and the like. But um, you've played in some places where there's not, it, primarily hasn't been kind to people of color. Um, what, mm -hmm. what, what, what challenges did you face or have you faced playing in places like Ireland and Poland and these places that, that like I said, primarily don't usually mm -hmm. um, do well with, socially, with people of color. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've always been someone that wants to try new things and be outside of the box. You know, again, historically, Ireland players and Bermudian players have been going to this, uh, you know, Eastern Europe and, and, and Europe as such. So, you know, I wanted to be a trailblazer in that and open, you know, young players' eyes uh, that professional football is all over the world, you know, not just in in England and such. But, yeah, I mean, for me, I have an open mind. I understand that people have different cultures, people have different mindsets, people have different ideals. Um, so, you know, even playing in Estonia first, you know, <laughs> In, in, the, in the place that I was playing in now, it, it was one other black player. Um, you know, they spoke Russian there, even though it was in Estonia, it was right next to the Russian border. And of course, you know, people look at you and because you, you, they, they're not used to seeing, you know, again, people of color. However, in Nauva, I had an amazing time because I had the support of the team, my teammates, you know, they all made sure that I was okay. And obviously I was playing well there. So, Again, it's not always, you know, horrible experiences, even though I take any experience as a learning experience. You know, when could I have a, had said 
that I would travel to Estonia to play. And, you know, playing in the Europa League, they were playing in front of 10,000 people in Bosnia. I mean, that's that's a major feat for me that I always remember. And again, Ireland, Ireland was a great time. Um, it was a good change of people being able to speak English. That's always the tough one. You know, the different language barriers and not many people uh, speak English where I've been. So that was a great time. But again, you know, you have, you know, your situations and, and how people may look at you or want to betray you, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I have a strong mindset, you know, if I'm playing football and I have my, my essential thing, essential things around me, I'm okay. I don't need much. Um, I just want to be respected at the end of the day. And, and in Poland, it was a different situation. Um, with them, you know, I, I was being mistreated. Um, and end of the day, uh, I take that as an experience. Um, I don't regret it, um, but to come home, especially with COVID-19, for me, it was probably you know, a blessing in disguise. And, you know, I wasn't happy over there. Um, I couldn't concentrate on football. And as I already say, you know, it's, it made me think I'm 28 now. You know, maybe it's time to, to, to pack it in. But, you know, I came home with my support system. Um, you know, they, whatever I need, you know, they sort me out. So now I've come home working hard and, you know, I feel rejuvenated. Um, so we'll see what happens next. But again, it, it, I don't want it to discourage anyone and say, oh, I don't want to play in this country or that country. It's all an experience. You know, it's my good has outweighed the bad. I'll say that for sure. All right, brother. Well, if it's good to reminisce about uh, a year ago, Bermuda making history, uh, playing in the Gold Cup, winning at least one game, um, as many would say, not finishing at the bottom, uh, but getting mm -hmm. gaining respect around the Caribbean. I know uh, last week or week before last, I had a chat with the president of CONCACAF, and um, mm -hmm. he was admiring the way the Bermuda team handled themselves in the the Gold Cup. And, and that says a lot when the leader of an organization mm -hmm identifies what a small nation can do if given the opportunity just to play. Mm -hmm. Years going by, mm -hmm. we never had that opportunity. We were always exactly. one off, one game here, one game there. But with the opportunities now of a volume of games, um, mm -hmm. I think um, it, it bodes well, not only for the sport, but for the country as well. And, and just 100%. to finish off, what we were able to do in Mexico, I think gained mm -hmm. more respect uh, despite the loss, we gained more respect around the Caribbean and, and the world for what we were able to do there um, mm -hmm. in, just, in, in, in just 90 minutes. Um, what we had done in the Gold Cup was, was, was amazing, but, but what we were able to do in Mexico, I think a lot of people would have stood up and not just said, oh, that's those guys in the pink jerseys. You know, yeah, so. exactly. They, they love our pink jerseys for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's wearing the pink now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. Um, stay well. We'll be in touch. Hopefully Appreciate things um, get better very soon and you can get back to doing something you really, really love. And that's playing mm -hmm. football as well as representing Bermuda. All right. Appreciate it. Have All a good right. one. Have a